Blazing Saddles. Brought to you from the great Northwest motherlode gold country of the wild, wild west. This is the second part to From the Furnace. I want to recall there's a scene from a movie by Mel Brooks called Blazing Saddles. And in it, the town is under threat by um, mobsters that are going to take over and destroy the place. And every sheriff that's been in the town has been, well, murdered. And they go, the local mayor, to the local governor of the state, who's a thoroughly corrupt individual. <laughs> and there's a scene <laughs> where... The town has a town hall meeting. And all the people in the town go down to the church for the town hall meeting. And they're sitting there and the little put preacher is behind the pulpit. And the mayor gets up and the, the preacher stays behind the pulpit. But the mayor gets up and begins to pontificate about well, we need to do something about this. It's threatening our town, and this used to be a safe place, and there's bandidos all over, and we got it, and they killed the sheriff, and, and <clears throat> what are we going to do? And then one person gets up and goes, Wah! and then another person whines about their town, and another person says, well, I don't want to risk my life, and blah, 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 and then the mountain man gets up there, and he comes up to the front, he makes a speech, and his speech goes something like this. And everybody in the church goes, yay! And they clap and shout and says, yes, that's what we should do. And then the mayor says, well, we need to get a sheriff and get a posse. And everybody sees up and yay shouts and they all ran out of the church. And it couldn't be more true then as now. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say this illustrates the fact that they're going to what is known as the house of God, the church. And the, pulp, the, the pastor is standing behind the pulpit not contributing, and the people get up and they're taking all their opinions and they're figuring out what to do at the town hall meeting and they neglect to uh, add God, seeking God and asking his counsel for what they should do. Blazing saddles. So we've gone from the furnace to the blazing saddles and this particular fire that's calling out to seek God and repent, and people are still continuing to do it man's way, okay? without God's intervention, without repentance. And these are smoke signals coming up from Stanislaus National Forest. And I mean that to you too, Russia and Putin. And I mean all of you. This is not about my nation or my turf or my stuff or whatever. This is about the kingdom of heaven and doing God's will God's way and seeking him to find out what it is now I propose to you Jeremiah chapter 4 If you will return to me, O Israel, says the Lord, return to me and I will put away your abominations out of my sight. Then you shall not be moved. Then you shall swear the Lord lives in truth, in judgment and in righteousness. The nations shall bless themselves and in, in him they shall glory. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and do not sow among thorns. Circumcise yourself to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your hearts. You men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like a fire and burn so that no one can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Declare in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, blow the trumpet in the land. 
Cry, gather together and say, assemble yourselves and let us go into the fortified city. Set up the standard towards Zion. Take refuge. Do not delay, for I will be a disaster from the north and great destruction. Jeremiah 4, 1 through 6. Now I say this to the leaders of this nation that I live in, including the person that's dwelling in the place of the most high office in the land. Okay? Repent. Because the fires are going to come upon you. you, The destruction. The destroyer will expose himself at noonday. He will, he will be revealed. And destruction will come upon this land. And not just this land. There will be a conflagration. There will be a fire that will burn the entire earth. Because God's judgments... And there are bowls of fire that I saw a couple months ago. I did a YouTube video on it. You can see it. But the bowls of fire will be, they will, they will be poured out. God is mindful. He is mindful of his martyrs, 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 martyrs in the Middle East. Blood and fire and smoke. He is mindful of evil men. He is mindful of what is the those who destroy the earth. And your judgments are great, God, and they are perfect. And they are perfect. Let's look at Jeremiah 6. Verse 4, prepare war against her, rise and let us go up at noon. Woe to us, for the day goes away. For the shadows of the evening are lengthening. Arise and let us go by night. And let us destroy her palaces. For thus has the Lord of hosts said. Cut down trees and build a mound against Jerusalem. This is a city to be punished. She is full of oppression in her midst. As a fountain wells up with water, so she wells up with her wickedness. Violence and plundering are heard in her. Before me continually are grief and wounds. Be instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from you, lest I make you desolate, a land not inhabited. For thus says the Lord, They shall thoroughly glean as a vine the remnant of Israel. As a grape gatherer, put your hand back into the branches. To whom shall I speak and give warning? That they may hear, indeed, their ears uncircumcised, and they cannot give heed. Behold, the word of the Lord is a reproach to them. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of fury of the Lord. I am weary of holding it in. I will pour it out on the children outside and on the assembly of young men together. For even the husband and wife shall be taken, for even the husband, excuse me, shall be taken with the wife. They agreed with him as full of days. The aged with him who is full of days. And their houses shall be turned over to others. Fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, says the Lord. Because from the least of them even to the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And greed, I might add. And from the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals falsely they have also healed the hurt of my people slightly saying peace peace when there is no peace were they ashamed when they had committed abomination no they were not at all ashamed nor did they know how to blush therefore they shall fall among those who fall at the time i punish them they shall be cast down says the lord that says the lord stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it that you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Also, I, I set watchmen over you saying, listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not listen. Therefore, hear you nations and know, O congregation who is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will certainly bring calamity on this people, the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not heeded my words, nor my law, but rejected it. For what purpose to me comes frankincense from Sheva? Man, sweet came from a far country. Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor are your sacrifices sweet to me. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and sons together shall fall upon him, the neighbor and his friend 
shall perish. Thus says the Lord, Behold, the people come from the north country, and a great nation will be raised from the farthest parts of the earth. They will lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice wars like the sea, and they ride on horses as men of war set in array against you, O daughter of Zion. We have heard the report of it. Our hands grow feeble, and anguish has taken hold of us, pain as of a woman in labor. Do not go out into the field, nor walk by the way, because of the sword of the enemy. Fear is on every side. O oh, daughter of my people, dress in sackcloth and roll about in ashes. Make mourning as for an only son, most bitter lamentation, for the plunderer will suddenly come upon us. I have set you as an assayer and a fortress among my people, that you may know and test their way. They are all stubborn rebels, walking as slanderers. They are bronze and iron. They are all corruptors. The bellows blow fiercely. The lead is consumed by the fire. The smelter refines in vain, for the wicked are not drawn off. People will call them rejected silver because the Lord has rejected them. Jeremiah 6. The end of the chapter. And now, Jeremiah 7. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all you of Judah, who enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Do not trust in these lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgments between a man and his neighbor, if you do not oppress the stranger and the fatherless and the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place or walk after other gods to your hurt. Then I will cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal and walk after other gods whom you do not know? And then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by not my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations. Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of thieves in your whole eyes? Behold, I, even I, have seen it, says the Lord. But go now to my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first. And see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people Israel. And now because you have done all these works, says the Lord, and I spoke to you rising up early and speaking, but you did not hear. And I called to you, but you did not answer. Therefore I will do to the house which is called by my name, in which you trust, and to this place which I gave to you and your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh, and I will cast, cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brethren, the whole posterity of Ephraim. Therefore, do not pray for this people, nor lift up a cry or prayer for them, nor make intercession to me, for I will not hear you. I want to talk to you about this place. That is called Shiloh. Shiloh it says in verse 14, I will do to the house which is called by my name in which you trust and to this place which I gave to you and your fathers as I have done in Shiloh. What happened in Shiloh? Ichabod, the glory left. God, the Ark of the Covenant was taken by the Philist Philistines 
and Eli fell over on his back and broke his neck and his wife uh his sons his sons were killed and his um their wives one of the wives uh delivered a child his grandchild and he called him Ichabod because the glory has departed from the Lord's house why because Eli did not restrain his sons and they continued to fornicate and eat the sacrifices that were given for the altar. And they did wickedly before the Lord. They were not restrained from doing evil. They did not keep God's statutes and judgments. Now I went to Shiloh. I believe it was the spring of 2004. On a bus tour. There were a lot of Chinese there. Very, very loved Jesus. And uh, we went to the alleged place where the Shiloh, the house, which is referred to here, was kept for Shiloh. And the ladies got out. I think there were some gentlemen there, but there's usually more ladies. And they began worshiping with their flags and their banners and singing and praying when the Spirit of the Lord came on me. And I began to prophesy. And this is the essence of what I prophesied. God says that he's a holy God, and he does not dwell in a profane place amongst a profane people or in a profane land. And he will not return until that land keeps its statutes and its precepts and becomes a holy land, because he is a holy God and not a profane God. That was the essence of it. And that means that the current place of Shiloh is not a holy place, but it will be holy. Then let's talk about the next scripture um, verse in Jeremiah seven fifteen. It talks about, and I will cast you out of my sight as I've cast out all your brethren, the whole posterity of Ephraim. The descendants of Ephraim, uh, according to spiritual blessings uh, given for the tribe of Ephraim, uh, indicate that the United States of America predominantly are the descendants of Ephraim. And this is, that scripture is for them.